Okay, the last speaker for today is an accomplished Philippine composer, ethnomusicologist, and cultural activist as well. Professor Dr. Jonas, based from University of Philippines, has been with us for many years now. And during the past few years, he's joined us uh, online due to the COVID-19 outbreak too. And today, uh, I thought we have a chance to meet face to face, but no, he decided that mm. he cannot come to Thailand. We we'll talk about it later, Jonas. <laughs> yes, and now he he reflects on the strange life and challenges our artists face during these years, and how to adapt to the condition for both composers, performers, and actually audience as well. I guess. So in his paper, for Arlene, creation COVID-19, liminality and the aesthetics of this solution, he'll talk about what we have learned from this and how the aesthetics is guided by the situation. So please welcome Professor Dr. Jonas Bez. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, let me just share a little uh, something here for the students. Uh, of course, it's just uh, actually, uh, can you see it? Thank can you, you see my screen? Yeah. While we test your system, well, Jonas, uh, you, you, you cannot be here because of the flight problem, right? Not, not because of uh, something else. <laughs> no, uh, I, no, 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 I, I couldn't be here. Uh, well, it's also right, but I couldn't be here because uh, I, I just learned about my acceptance last Wednesday and it takes about two weeks to apply for a leave in the university. So, so uh, oh, the dean was able to come, Vern was able to come, but me, I wasn't able to. Okay. I had no time to apply for my papers. Anyway, uh, the title of my paper is for Arlene, Creation, COVID-19, Liminality, and the Aesthetics of Dissolution. And for this, because uh, this actually meant more for students than for professionals, but for everybody anyway, I just have prepared a word list, which you can follow. The list uh, involves the conceptual, first the conceptual and theoretical uh, aspect of the paper. And the second is the musical aspect of the paper. The theoretical aspect involves the notion of the real, which I have in quotation marks, and the nature of the unreal, with un being in, uh, in uh, uh, parentheses. And then the notion of sublation, uh, which is a Hegelian notion in dialectics. In the German sense, it's called Aufhebung. And you find this in the Phenomenology of the Spirit of 1807. And then the notion of liminality, which is in betweenness. And then the notion of dissolution, which is decay, disintegration, or if you like more dramatically, evanescence. And then authors like Walter Benjamin, who after Charles Baudelaire, uh, Baudelaire uh, my French is very bad, uh, talks of the shock experience of modernity. Uh, Alice Marder, another uh, writer, who talks of temporal disorders in her book, Dead Time of 2001. And of course, one of my uh, early uh, works as, uh, as a ethnomusicologist uh, about the political economy of the real, which was actually a project that was delivered in Wisconsin in 2002. And uh, let me preempt some of the pieces I'll be playing. Uh, this is from Handwerk's uh, uh, concert, Handwerk of Cologne concert, uh, uh, Klasse Spallinger. I will play a piece from Guillaume Dufay, a very short snippet from that piece called Ajuma Moore. I think, I hope you know who, uh, when Guillaume Dufay had, uh, is from the Burgundian school about the uh, 1400s, maybe. Yeah, I think 1400s. And then Matthias Spallinger, who's my teacher. And, and we will listen to a part of his Ajuma Moore. And then J.S. Bach, Saraband from the cello suite in E flat. And then, the, the 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 music gravitates to my piece for early which is the main topic of the of the paper for which I will play play three short uh, segments the preludium the Quranto and the Saraban. Okay, is that is that okay? Uh, so I start reading my paper now. Um, this paper will discuss the conditions in the creation and production of a new composition, commissioned and created at on a pandemic, 2019-2020, and performed at the height of the lockdown. The work in question is entitled For Arlene, for flute, clarinet, and cello, written for the German ensemble Handwerk and premiered at the Alte Vorwache in Cologne in October 2020 in their production entitled Klasse Spalier. 
The aim of the discussion is to transcend the global conditions that in many ways define the creative and receptive processes in the production of the piece by analyzing how that resulting global milieu had made an impact on the aesthetics of the work grounded in the notion of dissolution. In, and in such a way, does the paper intend to address the ongoing discourses on artistic creation and production in line with COVID-19, which I think is still ongoing in many parts of the world. Now I talk about production and the nature of the unreal. In this kind of world, we are unaware to be ever subject to a dialectical process in what Hegel in phenomenal, Phenomenology of the Spirit uh, would have called sublation or in German Aufhebung. The real is the rational and the rational is the real. That would be the, uh, that would be the first assumption. This is, the, this, is, this is from which I can derive my conceptual views that contradictions define our consciousness of what we term reality. From our own selves to the society we belong and to the global and virtual worlds that surround us, our conscious lives are an implosion, a creation from contradictions within ourselves. So that's the Hegelian aspect of my thinking. When the world was struck by COVID, by the COVID pandemic, the new normal in quotes of lockdowns, social distancing, and disenfranchisement was a confrontation with, in quotation marks, reality. As with everyday art life, artistic production bore the brunt of the impact of this so-called new normal. Concert productions were done within remote platforms, Zoom or YouTube, with makeshift performances in front of makeshift audiences who do not see each other. The unreal has therefore become the new reality, the irrational, the rational. The modern world has long been enticed with the unreal. So this is not new. The 20th century thinker, Walter Benjamin, in, the, in his essays on the 19th century poet, Charles Baudelaire, speaks of the shock experience of modernity by which one no longer has the capacity to experience time as it happens. This is echoed by Elisa Marder in her book, Dead Time, where in dealing with works by Baudelaire and Flaubert, the author describes the emergence of what she calls in quotes, temporal disorders or the incapacity to experience time as a lived experience. And I think, uh, uh, if you have heard that I had a piece uh, premiered in, in Berlin last Saturday, this was the main uh, gist of the composition. In both works, it is modernity predicated on the development of technology that in bearing the burden of time, like email, social media, YouTube, Spotify, video and audio gadgets, cellular phones, etc., remains at the helm of such a creation of this new, rather virtual unreality, the same kind, in the same way I would render it unreality, because it's between real and unreal. This is in saying that things don't really change, but conditions that redefine our experience of things give us this semblance of change. The creation of semblances of reality to fill up the economic destitution among the large underprivileged sectors of the so-called developing worlds like the Philippines give rise to the early years, in the early years of the 21st century, to music and movie piracy, by which movies and music are reproduced in rather poor quality, so that the much cheaper price and experience by populations in the shanties and slums at the peripheries of the modern cities. Do you have this in Thailand? The, the piracy of movies and music. This gives us a semblance of quote unquote inclusion to a population already excluded from technological development by default. And this was the subject of my work in Wisconsin. At the risk of speculation, I believe that there is reason to think that the COVID and its repercussions on the social conditions at a global scale merely speeded up the rather inevitable progression towards the reality of the unreal. Reality 
logically becomes what it is by, to invoke Hegel again, self-contradiction. Building from this perspective, I describe the creation and production of a new composition as it has been subjected to the conditions of the pandemic, paradoxically, however, by which a new aesthetic can be derived from. Now I talk about for Arlene, Spallinger, and the aesthetics of dissolution. The trio of for Arlene was begun in Vienna at the eve of the pandemic on October 6, 2019, after a long telephone conversation with my former teacher, Matthias Spallinger, the night before. Prior to this was the plan to produce a live concert that would feature some of Spallinger's works along with those of his former students, which to my understanding would be some kind of a dialogue between student and teacher by means of music. Handwerk's production project entitled Klasse Spallinger, it's, it's right here, somewhere, yeah, Klasse Spallinger, uh, would feature this new commission in reference to a famous Spallinger work, Adium Amour, of 1982 and 1983, for violin and cello. A homage to the famous composer of the Burgundian school, Guillaume Dufay, a most as expected epistemology in contemporary music, Spallinger's Adium Amour is a masterpiece of dissolution. The ghost-like appearance of tidbits of Dufay, of the Dufay chanson, and the sonic universe of noise, cracks, hisses, and other extended sounds from the two string instruments underscore the remoteness of the Burgundian composer from today's worldview. This is not exactly, however, a way of listening to old music with new ears, as with, let's say, the work of Johannes Schulhorn or Isabel Mundry. I, I respect both their works, but it is not what it is. This actually objectifies the very idea of alienation, of remoteness, and in fact, dissolution itself, and in so doing, construct an aesthetic from, from it, one characterized by decay and disintegration. A rather difficult challenge was, however, handed to, to me by my former teacher who declares that the entire formal structure of his adieu amour is still within the formal schema of a 15th century chanson, and that he would like me to discover this such a dialectic. Spallinger's Adjuma Moore is indeed, I must say, once more, a masterpiece of dissolution. Let me play snippets from Dufay and from the Spallinger. Normal. Now here is Dufay. Okay, now let's listen to Spalling for a moment. Okay, here we go.
Okay, beautiful work. Um, so it's too bad we can't play the whole thing anyway. Now for Arlene, my piece is therefore conceived as a dialogic response to Spalinger, to his Adjima Moore. On the question of how old, how the old can be objectified in light of the new, I created this piece as a set of binary dance forms as used by Michael Pretorius in the Stepsicore dances or by J.S. Bach in let's say the six streets for cello solo. But just as the binary dance forms are constructed largely from harmonic principles, the dissolution of the European harmonic gestalt, which largely characterizes my new music praxis, has significant sonic structural as well as receptive repercussions on the final appearance of the con composition and the nature of the piece on the level of its being, its ontology. Okay, its being. Now, let me just, uh, just for the sake of review, let me just uh, play a bit of Bach uh, so that at least we, we try to recall what a binary uh, dance form is. Uh, I'm sure many people don't need this, but uh, maybe some students need this. I know in the Philippines they would. Anyway, let me play this, uh, the Saraband from the cello suite in E flat. And that will repeat. And we all know that uh, in the context of the binary dance form, the first, per, the first, uh, yeah, the first uh, section, which is the A section, we call the A section, is features uh, an establishment of the tonic and a and a uh, departure from it towards the B section, which apparently is a departure further and back into the A, which returns into the tonic. And that's actually the basic schema for a binary dance form. But as a Dufay chanson dissolves like ghost into the air in Spalinger's Ajuma Moor, in its formal structure, A repeat, B A repeat in the binary dance form, it is that, that very structure, by the way, that dissolves into the air with the annihilation of the harmonic gestalt in my piece for Arlene. The piece has seven short movements and commences with the preludium and then proceeds into a series of binary dances, the Aleman, the Courant, the Saraban, the Gavot, the two Gavots, and the Gig. While the movements deliber de deliberately show, albeit with a bit of irony, the struggle to maintain the bi binary form, the distorted harmonic schema within a liminal position between being harmonic and not and being not, matched with the unsettling, very short temporal ruptures that distort any notion of musical phrase renders the very idea of form in conflation with harmony in a state of dissolution. Such is where a bizarre sense of, for the lack of a better term, beauty in quotes, and a sense of, quotes again, order are derived to be salient points of decay. Dissolution in effect become the idealized object emerging from its own self-contradiction. The question remains if such aesthetic is reflective of today's liminal world. Let me just play uh, three short uh, portions of, uh, of my piece. Uh, let me just, uh, okay. Oh, in the, uh, sorry. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, play the prelude first.
Okay, that was the preludium. Let's listen to the uh, Quran somewhere here. Okay. Now we listen to the Saraban. Okay, now I said I said that dissolution is uh, the aesthetic, and that the, I, I asked the question uh, if this, that aesthetic is reflected of today's liminal world. In fact, is dissolution the nature of the now, us huh, after the pandemic? I speak therefore of liminality in the aesthetics of this now, this in betweenness. It is important to consider how we think of the now in terms of a liminality, just as in those two, two compositions I have uh, discussed. An in-betweenness that characterizes the transient slash transitory or evanescent nature of things. This liminality penetrates into the most significant aspects of our individuality, echo echoing into our social, political, and cultural milieu. I am inclined to think that this liminality is the present nature as of what we see as, in quotes again, real. Years before the pandemic, certain indicators of liminality come in the form of eclecticisms that find their way into the various modes of creation in contemporary music, from the deliberate use of or, or reference to older materials, perhaps to derive new meanings, to a myriad of pyrotechnics that redefine the very ontology of the creative process, leading into an unsettling question what is of what is, as what is new actually is in new music. Despite the problematization of such, I find it rather remarkable for the continued exploration of a number of artists in creating music that might speak of the here and the now, despite questions 
that are uh, confronting them, appropriation and all that stuff. No? The Cologne-based Belgian pianist Marlies de Bakker, for example, no? makes impressive spontaneous improvisations. While on the other end, the Bandung-based gamelan composer Iwan Gunawan have outputs like an arrangement of Steve Rice's six marimbas for gamelan instruments. Non-notated music for piano, notated music for the gamelan. Eclectic in betweenness seems to find its way into the production of contemporary music because contemporary life is in between. I believe the years of lockdown have further underscored liminality as the very nature of creation. The work on the three or four Arlene was, was one of irony and reluctance. It was a deliberate exploration of territories that in the first place may already have been explored before, but one that is made by myself, a non-European, for a European production. In other words, it was a deliberate transgression of my own quote unquote difference, if only to negate this difference. What have I to do with Bach or Michael Pretorius? But also, what I have I not to do with Bach or Michael Pretorius? I live in the same world. Truly, we all have something to do with Bach and Michael Pretorius, or with Beethoven, or with Lachenman, or with Weber, just as we have something to do with the Iraya Mangyan of Mindoro Island in the Philippines, or the Kalinga in Northern Philippines, or the Balinese, or the Busavi Highlanders in New Guinea, or the Syrians, or the people of Ukraine. We all belong to this world. And the pandemic perhaps paradoxically enlightened us to see our differences as liminal. The differences are liminal. For Arlene celebrates that liminality by making dissolution itself the object of its idealisms and its very aesthetic. Where to go next, we will see in the ensuing years. And I'm proud of my uh, young colleagues uh, who are now everywhere. I don't think they came today. Uh, anyway, so thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Jonas. And uh, let me turn the microphone to the audience if they have any question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, Jonas. <laughs> okay. Hang on there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 no problem. Uh, if any of you have questions, let me know. I, 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 you know, I should have been there, but the problem is, if I were there, I, I'd be drunk already. <laughs> <Joke. laughs> uh, anyway, let, let me ask you this then. Uh, you talk about this solution, and usually this word, to me at least, connotes the negative feeling. Yeah. And, uh, for you, Aesthetically, do you think that this is a negative feeling, or you? Oh, no, it, it, it can be used. It can be used. It can be used to springboard or something. Mm. Yeah, if you look at this Spallinger piece, he used this ghost-like appearance of dissolution itself, as it's very aesthetic. And just I tried to do that in in dialogue with him in in for Arlene. Right, and by by the same comparison, uh, many views the past two years as the unproductive years. Uh, yeah. Even the COVID nineteen stopped all the, how to say that regular, hu regular human interaction, right? But uh, yeah. look, looks like for you, you have found uh, some. I, I had I had five commissions in the past two years. Hmm. I published my, my my article in Malaysia. I am about to publish a book which I worked on in the last two years. Hmm. It's about to come out. It's on Maseda and Spalinger. I hope people can read it. And uh, it's coming out soon by uh, University of Philippines Press. And uh, I still have several commissions to come out uh, with uh, towards the end of the year. So it's actually very productive for me to be working. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> at so least I don't have to come to the office. I could. I could so for you, it's not unproductive at all, right? Is it the usual? No, 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 not, not at all, not at all. It was so productive. It was so productive. I, 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 I have time to think. Hmm. To reflect to look back right as we are in the institute that train train the artists in a way train the young people to become artists yeah. would you say that in this sense uh our, our group of people the creative group uh, let, let's say it that way is the one who more or less uh, adaptive to the change i i think it is i mean uh well of course Glenn, not not all maybe not not only but uh those in the those in the uh, those in the medical sciences, or those in the 
those in the uh, physical sciences. Or, uh, I'm sure it, it, it's not because we're just in the arts, because there, there are many, but any, any human endeavor that entails perhaps imagination, creativity, transcendence, in fact, mm -hmm. transcendence. And, and, and you find transcendence not only in the arts, you find that in the sciences as well. So uh, I think it's, it's more the, the people who are transcendent who, okay. who are able to. <laughs> right, thank you, Aran. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, it's too bad that we don't have you here right now, Jonas, because uh, I, I still feel after two years that communication through Zoom or whatever technology yeah, right, yeah, is yeah. limited and I cannot. Like, 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 like there are so many protocols regarding travel also. So I could just like, if I got my acceptance last Wednesday, I, I had to show the papers, but it takes about two weeks to process that. So I could, uh, I could uh, just leave. I mean, that is the thing. I, I had a meeting today in the college, uh, <laughs> which apparently part of my job. So I could have just, if, if I had left, I had not been in that meeting, that would be very bad. So. so over there in the Philippines, are you back to normal now at this point? Not really, not really. We're, we're, we're bracing ourselves for going into the, that was a part of the, the topic discussion. We're bracing ourselves for returning to the face-to-face, -face, but we're still, uh, we're, we're liminal about it. It's, we're in this in betweenness about right. this. You are still in the luminality phase. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are still in that. I mean, in a, a very tough condition for us. <laughs> not only not only in the universities, in industry, in, hmm. in, of course, there's still this fear. And, right. Yeah, in tough. Thailand now, we are going back more or less to normal, but we oh, don't know good. how long. Okay. Uh, kind of miss the COVID episode a bit when students have to turn in yeah, home yeah. every time. Yeah. The, 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 there is always this thing, you can go back to normal, but there's always this thing, okay, tomorrow there's a lockdown. I mean, it, it's, it's something that uh, we have to be ready with. It, it's it's not being uh, complacent with wherever we are like before the pandemic. So still, we're still in that uh, thing. Right, I guess- and I think that's our, that is our life that we can derive aesthetics from that. Mm. I think once you're back, back to normal, artists, once you're back to normal, we have to find a new aesthetics again, I guess. Right. Yeah, but once you're back to normal, we find it unnormal. Right. <laughs> well, Jonas, it's great to have you here, even though all yeah. are early this year. Okay, so next next year, let's hope we can have you here in person. Yeah, yeah. Not only not only next year, maybe even earlier. But uh, right. Um, but not only as a program, but in in between as well. Okay. Yeah. Right. In between. Yeah. Thank you very much for everybody. Very much, Jonas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, were there, were there people? Were there people who listen to my talk? Are there people? <laughs> people go out for go out for dinner now. They don't want to. Be okay, there. okay, okay. <laughs> so goodbye. Have Take a nice care, time. We we'll talk to you later then. Okay. And yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Tonight, okay. Bye bye. Nice to talk okay, to you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you.